welcome to The Fitterist Show with your host, Christopher Allen, where we explore the art of mind and body conditioning. As gyms and health clubs across the nation begin to reopen from the countrywide lockdown in mid-March, how can they do so safely? What must these clubs do to create an environment that maintains social distancing and adheres to strict cleanliness guidelines? While the process and timing will vary from state to state and even within municipalities, there are common practices and procedures that we are likely to see in gym reopenings. In this episode, we take a look at what gyms might look like, some of the cleaning protocols, personal hygiene, social distancing, and personal training to help you answer the question if and when you might want to consider going back to the gym. So, let's dive in. Just a little background, but gyms were an obvious candidate to close during the coronavirus pandemic, right? People sweat, don't always clean it up. Everything from machines to mats to equipment and dumbbells is all shared. And no matter what the best efforts of a gym or fitness and health club are at regular cleaning and sanitizing, a gym is only as clean as the people that actually use it make it. And As the economy slowly emerges from weeks and weeks of shutdown, there are some serious challenges ahead for the fitness market. Now, the International Health Racket Sports Club Association, IHRSA, which is one of the governing bodies of gyms and health club facilities, calculates that overall across the nation that gyms and fitness clubs have been hemorrhaging about $700 million per week at the height of the restrictions and lockdowns and that collectively, the U.S. fitness industry has taken a hit of about $2.8 billion. So how health clubs and gyms emerge from this is going to be key to getting them not only back financially, but getting you and others back in the gym so they can maintain a healthy lifestyle. So I want to spend a little bit of time examining what gyms might look like in a couple different areas. So in general, and most people have heard a lot of these things, but gyms, need to be disinfected and deep cleaned before they actually open to the public. Of course, most will be operating at about 25 to 50% capacity. Larger gyms, members can might have to call in advance to check the capacity to see if they you can't just show up at the gym necessarily because of capacity requirements. Reservations could be required to sign up for online in kind of windows of maybe one hour time blocks to work out in busier clubs. Some clubs might have zero contact thermometers upon arrival. Obviously, they're not going to let anybody in who is experiencing a elevated temperature or COVID-19 symptoms. Additional cleaning also needs to take place throughout the day. So you might see gyms closed for cleaning periods. So you might have an intermission from 11 to 12 or from 1 to 2 during which staff will do a full gym cleaning and actually close the gym to patrons. Obviously, you can come back after the cleaning period is completed. Group fitness classes will probably still be allowed, but obviously, you just have to make sure you're maintaining social distancing. Most gyms, from what I've seen, are not planning to reopen any child or daycare. Probably check your gym individually for what their policy is. The other items that you may see in gyms and health clubs include things like plexiglass barriers, not as much probably, in-app self-health checks, a lot of hand sanitizers, and obviously strong recommendations from clubs to wear gloves and even mastering workout. We'll get into the details of that in just a bit. On the cleaning front, I've kind of lumped into three different categories what clubs are likely to do. There's The first one is deep cleans. Those are more continuous scheduled disinfection of high-touch surfaces throughout the club, common areas. Equipment availability adjusted to allow for frequent thorough cleaning, right? Those are the deep clean areas, including kind of that intermission where they might just close the club down for an hour, do a deep clean, reopen. The second area is enhanced procedures. This is things like just using hospital-grade disinfectants that kills the coronavirus very quickly and Generally, team and staff members trained on cleaning protocols, how to clean from a procedural standpoint. And then the third element benefiting members is just the self-cleaning stations. So 
readily available equipment, disinfectant spray, paper towels, hand sanitizers, conveniently located throughout the club. Also, as a member, you're probably going to be requested slash required to clean equipment both before and after usage. So before you get on the treadmill, you're going to have to wipe it down with a disinfectant, do your workout. When you're done with the treadmill, do the same thing. Wipe it down, disinfect it again. Another thing some gyms are thinking about in order to maintain social distancing is not putting all the cleaning supplies and hand sanitizing stations in one area. They should be dispersed throughout the gym so that there are plenty of locations where you can maintain complete social distancing while trying to access the paper towels, disinfectant spray, hand sanitizers, etc. This would at least alleviate any issues of people having to gather around a centralized station. So forget about <laughs> gathering on a piece of equipment. The line becomes around the cleaning station. So they're trying to hopefully disperse that out throughout the club so that there are no lines around cleaning supplies. Another big area is masks or no masks. So the CDC recommends the use of face coverings or masks to slow the spread of the virus. Many states and companies are adopting measures that require masks to be worn in public or in their places of business. And I believe, uh, I know I live in Las Vegas. There's a recent attorney recommendation that says, yes, private businesses can indeed enforce masks to be worn in their physical location primary business. So the recommended use of masks may make it more difficult to exercise comfortably. So with masks, I think people may have difficulty exercising at peak performance if they're wearing a mask, just from a pure oxygen inhalation and exhalation. I think that individuals are going to have to make a decision on that. It might make it harder, make it more uncomfortable to exercise when people feel constrained in their breathing when they're exerting themselves at the level they do during exercise. So it's going to depend on how much you're really pushing yourself during exercise. If you're really going all out, I think masks could be an inhibitor to just getting enough breath and oxygen. But personally, I'm going to try it. I'm going to wear my mask, bring my mask, and then just see how it goes. Again, from being in quarantine to being into a gym, it's like, man, at least I'm in the gym. I don't have to, I'm not doing PRs or maxing out everything on day one so I can kind of ease back into it. So I think I might be able to use a mask, but in general, we'll see how it goes. The next big area is social distancing. Now you have to remember that the recommendations for social distancing are based on our usual breathing patterns, that fine droplets won't go beyond six feet. But remember in a gym, when a person is breathing heavily, and under duress because they're exercising, the spread might even be more than the six feet recommended guidelines. So we don't know that for sure, but there are possibilities that might come back and create additional challenges for gyms. So what are gyms doing in this respect? Well, first thing they're doing is equipment spacing and availability. So gyms need to make sure that things are more than six feet apart and that because people move from one machine to another, the pathways and things like that need to be pretty clearly marked. And gyms are obviously not laid out given current machine placements with these policies in mind, and it's not something you can just easily do. So I suspect most gyms will do staggered machine usage to satisfy the distance requirements, which would mean some pieces of machinery and some exercise stations will be taped off or color coded or something to ensure that they can maintain enough social distancing. So they might have either color coded things where you can use this machine on this day, or they might just tape off machines and say, hey, this one can't be used today. And they might move that around after hours at night. And you'll likely notice that some of the cardio equipment will be turned off or just marked closed to allow for social distancing as well. On the group fitness side, I think they'll just adjust the class sizes for the most part. They'll probably require reservations and just to make sure they can maintain class attendee schedules will be adjusted consistent with guidelines and make sure that they have thorough cleaning of things like mats and things uh, that are used in those classes, whether they're dumbbells or bands, uh, like I said, mats between classes. And I think they'll probably do just floor indicators spaced six feet plus apart 
to help people practice social distancing in those group and fitness classes. And I mentioned earlier, the children's playroom will likely remain closed until guidelines can really safely be opening and they'll follow best practices when they do open, uh, you know, as determined by CDC guidelines. With regard to locker rooms, given typical locker room layouts, it's going to be challenging to imagine how social distancing guidelines could be followed. I mean, within a six foot span, there's probably, if you stack lockers, there's probably 20 or 30 lockers, maybe more in a typical locker room. So I think a lot of gyms might just keep the locker rooms completely off limits other than the restroom and sink facilities. No showers, no locker rooms, no, cha- you know, no real changing rooms. I plan to just change my routine to just, I used to store stuff in a locker, just walk in with my gloves and my drink and my towel and then walk out as soon as I'm done. Personal training in gyms is probably going to be similar to kind of group classes. Obviously, with personal training, you don't have to necessarily touch the person or beast within six feet to kind of coach them and guide them through different exercises. And if they're doing good hygiene, I think personal training can still be done in the club. And again, there's some gray areas there. I think it's sometimes um, you know tough to always maintain six feet if you're really trying to coach somebody and ensure that the exercise hits the muscle in the right area. But I think it's doable. Personal training should be doable, even with a six-foot social distancing. Some people have asked about gym dues while gyms are closed. Obviously, if your gym remains closed, you should be excused from paying your dues. But if it does reopen and does follow local and state guidelines, you're likely to be bound by your contract, and they, the gym can charge you your dues even if you're not going. So a couple things you can do. One, check the club's website. Most gyms are updating their website is with regard to what their plans are and what their policies are. And most gyms, again, are being pretty good. I think my gym froze all charges and all memberships as of March 17th when they closed. And I assume when they open back up, they're going to start the billing of those memberships on a regular basis after that. But you can check their website for information. And if you're not sure, you can call the gym manager owner and just, you know, talk to them and see. Like if you don't feel comfortable coming back and you'd like to freeze your membership, a lot of people will allow you to freeze or pause your membership for some period of time. But you might just want to reach out and talk to them. If you really want to leave the gym and you say, I I love home workouts, I'm not going back right now, I'm not going back in the foreseeable future, check your contract and see if there's any cancellation items that are in your contract, if there's any penalties, if you pay a small fee, but just engage in a dialogue probably with a gym manager just to say, look, you might need a note from your doctor to say, hey, you're at higher risk. There's no point in putting yourself at further risk by going to a club when the coronavirus is still prevalent. And again, you might be able to just freeze your membership for a period of time. But be patient. Gyms are figuring this out for the first time as well. This is new to gyms, never happened before. Most gyms We'll have a rational conversation with you if you need to leave or you want to postpone it, freeze your membership, or get right back into it. Uh, They should be able to support you on all those fronts. So the big question, of course, is should or when should you go back to the gym? This is going to be really different for each person. Look, if you're a 65-year-old with diabetes, you're going to think about this decision and approach to the gym in a very different way than a 22-year-old with no medical issues whatsoever. You just have to be aware of the fact that you have to do good hand hygiene. There may be sick people going to where you might be exposed. And as such, you kind of just need to ask yourself, right? Do I have medical conditions that put me in higher risk in a situation like this? Do I have a really specific need to go to the gym? Is it absolutely necessary? Is it important enough to risk potentially getting COVID? Because regardless of all the precautions that people take, all the cleanliness, protocols, sanitization that goes on, a person could get exposed in the gym. Again, you could always go and call and or read on the health club's website the policies, procedures that they are undertaking to minimize the risk and maximizing their patron safety. This includes things like what are their 
principles on temperature checks, social distancing, cleaning, sanitization, procedures, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, the bottom line, it's really going to come down to your personal risk preference and how much of a risk you want to take to get back to the gym. Going to any public place, right, including gyms, is just not risk-free and something you'll have to be okay with if you decide to go back. So what you want to do is stay informed on what your gym is doing about what particular measures they're, they're taking, how they're helping ensure safety, and also look at experts' advice. Think about what they are saying, take that into account, and really examine your risk profile and what you're okay with doing. And again, you have to weigh your reasons for going to the gym. You have to determine whether those benefits are going to outweigh the possibility of getting sick or potentially spreading the virus. You may be asymptomatic. Also know that the science of the coronavirus is really changing constantly. I'm amazed at how little we still know about this, even though there are, I heard there's over like a hundred vaccine potentials in the broad, broad pipeline, which is great. Hopefully we get 10 of those that work, 20 of those, whatever. But there are things and new articles come out every day that say, hey, six feet might not be the right social distancing benchmark. It could be 10 feet. Someone else said, hey, if you see a sneeze, it can travel 13 feet. <laughs> and so you have to just make sure that you choose the path that you're most comfortable with. If you're still on the fence, look, there's, there's no need. You've been in quarantine and doing home exercise, hopefully, for the last two or three months. There's no need to rush to make a decision either way. You can take your time and make an informed decision. You just want to make sure that you give yourself that mental leeway that you need to make the right choice for you. There's always going to be some risk. Look, in a perfect world, no coronavirus, no pandemic, you could get in a car accident on the way to the gym and get injured, right? So there's always some risk. So the rewards of getting a great workout are huge. There are many, many, many benefits. And they are more easily achievable, in my opinion, at a gym because of the, all the equipment all of the machines, all of the weights, all of everything that's there, the culture, the environment, incredibly beneficial for your overall health. But again, it comes down to your personal risk profile and whether you believe it makes sense to return to the gym. It's not a decision you need to rush, but something you should think through. So as we look to the future, we have to remember that digital fitness classes have proved pretty incredibly popular in this era of self-quarantine, and isolation and lockdown and show that the public is generally still attached to their local gym as a place of community. Given the success of some of these online and virtual workouts and personal training, one potential path forward for health clubs could be kind of a hybrid model where you balance online classes where people work out at home with selective visits to the gym. So maybe not going to the gym five, six days a week, maybe going two or three days a week to provide that human connection in this kind of age of loneliness and disconnection when you're quarantined for a long period of time. But the most important thing right now is to help to maximally ensure the safety of both the staff and the patrons that go to gyms and health clubs and workout studios nationwide. So here's to a gradual and successful reopening of gyms across the country so everyone can get back to working out in whatever way makes the most sense for themselves. We'll talk to you next week. With that, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to The Fitterist Show. You can follow us on Instagram at FitteristMindBody and on Twitter at FitteristMind. If you enjoyed this episode, please send it to a friend or subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future episodes of The Fitterist Show. My name is Christopher Allen, and make it a magical day.